relationship management with Bazzy Morton from Georgia State. Good day, Bazzy. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Very well. Bazzy has done this presentation for us twice at conferences, and it's been a hit both, both times. I thought it got better the second time. So we decided to ask her to do it again as a webinar, and she's very happily and, and graciously accepted our invitation, so we're very pleased to bring you one of the best from our conference. Bazzy, take it away. Very nice, Lori. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. As Lori mentioned, my name is Bazzy L. Morton, and I work with a project called Best Practices Training at Georgia State University, where I'm the Educational Technology Specialist. So um, if you had a cust if you have customer relationship manager, hopefully this will give you some ideas on how you could use it. And if you don't have it, then this would be a great opportunity to learn about it and some of the <laughs> that were helpful and how we used it. So as I go throughout this and share how we use customer relationship manager in our program, I encourage you to keep in mind the procedures you use related to tracking points of contact with your end users. So at best practices, this is how we're set up. Uh, right here is right from the start. This is our contracting agency. Um, best practices is, is a part of Georgia State University. And we also use a desire to learn, which is a learning management system. So we get the registrations from right from the start. They come to Georgia State. And then we put them inside Desire to Learn. So each year we have about 7,500 to 12,000 people register for three to 10 courses per person, which is thousands of unique registrations each year, which of course brings up a lot of questions and things um, and a lot of people calling in and emailing us. So we, send, we get the data from right from the start and then get it into Desire to Learn. Then we have to send it back from Desire to Learn into a uh, student manager at Georgia State and then back to right from the start. So this is how we were before we got customer relationship manager. At our front desk, we received phone calls, emails, faxes, and we also received snail mail. And we had about four people at any given time at our front desk. That was um, full-time staff, part-time, and every now and again a GRA, or, which is a graduate research assistant. Our front desk was always very crowded, and they were always very busy, which was not, we wanted to be able to fix that. So what is Customer Relationship Manager? Um, I'll give you a couple of seconds to read this. But as you can see here, the Customer Relationship Manager, or CRM, is an optional module for Student Manager. Best practices have been using Student Manager for several years for registration purposes only. Separate from Student Manager, we tracked our calls on paper, in Microsoft Excel, by email, or whatever fit the mood for the day. Um, after a while, we reviewed several programs that would track points of contact between us and our end users and found that CRM best fit our needs. So what is Customer Relationship Manager to best practices? It's a lifesaver. So CRM, who does it help and how? Well, more so it helps our end users. Um, best practices trains pre-K teachers for the state of Georgia, so we're dealing with an adult population who usually comes through to get continuing education units or what we call professional development training. Um, it helps us at our customer service desk, and it also helps my director know how to staff people, where information can be improved, and things like that. And it does this by logging every point of contact that we enter into Student Manager. It logs our emails, it logs phone calls, and if someone walks up to our desk physically in the office, we're able to log that as well. So how does it work? From the name screen, we enter Alt F12 when we get a phone call in. And it brings up this box here that's in the center of the screen. And it allows us to track snail mail, email, phone, and any other type of contact that we have. When, it, when we log a phone call, it usually uh, stamps a time in there, which is really convenient. So we can, this also helps us track what time of day we get most of our calls. 
So um, it always automatically logs the date, the user that's entering the information, you'll enter the type of contact, and then here in this subject of contact, we can just enter whatever it is that we want to um, say that that point of contact was about. Then we select log it, and it's officially logged. It also logs emails. So when you double click on the email screen and it pulls up that window, it logs whatever is in the subject box. The body of the email is not logged, so what we've done is we try to make our subject boxes clear and to the point as possible so that when we're going back through the log, we can tell exactly what the subject or content of that email was. When we're reviewing CRM, what we do, we access it two different ways. The first way is going down here to the special button and selecting the contact history, which is here. Or we just go to the name screen and select comments and history, which is uh, might be a little simpler. Here is the information that was in that screen before the small box that appeared in the center of the screen. It all logs it here. So we know that it was an email sent on March 19th, and this was the subject of the email. And we also know that our user A Bishop 2 is the person that issued that email. When it comes to reporting, it's very simple. We just go through reports, demographics, CRM info. We like to export our things to a file, so we often do that. And you can set up, just like in any other uh, area of reporting, you can set the reports up the way you prefer to have them come out. Here is, is what CRM comes with, the, um, the report query, which of course can be um, set to whatever specific parameters your organization needs. And this is what it looks like when the report comes out in Student Manager. Uh, this is what we would use to go back through and determine um, how we would need to address the emails that were sent or if somebody want their password reset and things like that. And so this is what we learned from Student Manager, I'm sorry, from CRM initially. We learned that the reports were nice, but they had too much information and they generated confusion. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, they were totally unsearchable. So we needed a way to clean up our reports so that they'd actually be helpful to us. And each one, um, as you can see here, we have somebody that's just saying that it's we got a phone call and they're bugging them, but we don't know if that issue has been addressed or if they want a certificate. We had no way of tracking whether or not something had been completed or not. So we needed to improve our use of Customer Relationship Manager. So here's what we did. We set up codes for Customer Relationship Manager that were specific to our program. We gathered recent phone calls, email messages, and we do get some fax messages and every other point of contact that we get, and we separated them. We had the ones that at wanted purely information, so we separated into categories. For example, if you have programs exclusively for adults, children, or the summer that had different program coordinators, we put them in separate categories. Next, we thought about the types of phone calls or emails we received and decided, are they asking for general information? When classes start, when to register? Do they want a password to be reset? And we classified these into different categories as, as well. And next, we determined who could address the issues and how they could be addressed. So again, this is how we categorized it. And one thing I didn't mention before was we also dis decided to add whether or not it was resolved. So that was important to us. So here are our major categories that we came up with. We had a lot of requests. We wanted people to know whether or not they passed the course, were verifying their grades, and to send a certificate, uh, having their username or password reset. We had general requests or general information, something that we could look on a syllabus and tell them. Um, when things were due and how to check their grades. And we also had things that needed to be updated, which would take a few extra steps. Things 
where uh, someone might have registered for our course and then decided not to take it. And so we wanted to make sure to remove them from the email list. And we also had some tech support um, requests that were things that would require somebody else from a different department to address it. So we sorted all of the information into different categories. Again, like the previous screen showed, general tech requests and general requests for information. And what we did was we put that into an Excel spreadsheet. And so all of our requests we came out with, we just put them in sequential order. Requests is, starts with an R, so all of our requests start with an R for the code. And then we just went one, two, three, four through whatever. And then we had a description. So R1 means the person requested a certificate. And we wanted to make sure to include what year they were requesting a certificate for, and if necessary, the name of the course. And we also wanted to know whether or not it had been resolved or unresolved when the person entered it into CRM. And we repeated this for each one of the um, usual requests that we had. You'll notice that these requests are highlighted in yellow, and that's because these were things we felt could be addressed by a front desk. So the person who answered the phone should be able to deal with these things and send issue certificates or professional learning units, verify grades. All this should be done by the person on the phone because it's easily accessible in Student Manager. If it got busy and they weren't able to address the issue at that time, then they could mark it as unresolved and run a report and, re and resolve it later on during that same day. And if it wasn't resolved, then we could say who needed to resolve it. Was it our project director? Did we need to send it out to technical support? Did I need to address it? Or maybe I just didn't know who needed to address it at that time, but it wasn't resolved. So this is our coding category one, which is what we just saw. And as you can see, this is what it would look like inside um, student manager or inside CRM. And this is the second category that we use. These are our general requests. And again, this third column, sorry, fourth column is what it should look like inside CRM. When we added the colors in category code in three, we, in blue we coded things that needed an additional step and things that were not resolved, that cannot be resolved at the front desk. The codes highlighted in blue are what we would send to the back for resolution, and that would be for the director or escalated calls or things like that. Because they were not addressed by the first point of contact, they were always marked unresolved until they were actually completed or addressed. Most everything on the yellow background is on the yellow background because these are items that can be addressed by the front desk, the first point of contact. And then in category four, we had a lot of um, yellow and blue because those things there was a mixture. A lot of them need to be sent, needed to be sent to the back, and a lot of them could be addressed at the front desk. It just depended on how they were coded. So what we did was we gathered all this information and put it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then we made it accessible. We put this in our Manager 7 folder, and every time we had a new person hired, we would train them on how to enter this information into the CRM module in Student Manager. It was very important to us that everyone used the same coding so that when we used, ran reports, we would get the same information coming out of it. So um, when we would run the report, everyone who wanted a certificate had to have an R1 in that CRM field. And we made it mandatory that people use these codes. If we had things that came across that were not coded, then we would have a very pleasant um, talk with the person who wasn't coding things just to make sure that everyone was on board. One of the questions that came up at the, uh, at the training before was, um, how do you get people on board to use this? And what we found was helpful was to get the people who would be using the coding system, um, get them to make suggestions, get them involved in collecting um, the information and suggesting what codes and how things can be resolved as well. And for us, that helped. That helped get everyone to use the codes in Student Manager. So as you can see, the, the background here in yellow is what the, code, um, the coding sheet looks like. 
and the four screen shows how it actually looks in CRM. So in this second entry here, we had a phone call on November 16th at 11.16 a.m. and they requested, as you can tell, R1, so it matches up here, they requested a certificate for this course and it was resolved by this person. So T. Thacker entered that into the system and when she did initially, it was unresolved. A report was run and this person here, VLW, came back and issued that certificate and marked it resolved. So now that we were able to enter these codes, we went back and looked at how we ran our reports. Because we knew that there were a lot of um, things that were already resolved, if they were resolved, we didn't need to run a report for them. So what we did was we created a query that would only pull out things that were unresolved. And sometimes if they, the character field was a little tight, we would just type in U-N-R-E or as much of unresolved as we could. So we only wanted the first three letters. If it had U-N-R, then we considered it unresolved. We also wanted to make sure it wasn't an administrator sending these or administrator sent email. So we removed the administrator. Um, we didn't want the record user to be the administrator, so we entered that in and just made it really specific to what it was we needed. So this is a query for our escalated calls and unresolved issues. And this is what the report looks like. So I could say for Erin Allman on April 24th, we sent her a certificate and she also was sent a reminder about her certificate um, to take a survey. We updated something, we updated her email address and that's been resolved. And so it gives us all of that information. Like I mentioned before, we pref I like to export my things into Excel and sort them if I need to by a phone call or what the request may have been. So this is how we do that in the export data selector. And I always export it to Microsoft Excel. And then from there, I'm able to say determine who can fix this. This also helps us to know how to staff our front desk. Since the implementation of CRM, we've gone from having four people at our front desk to, occasion, to having just one person full time and occasionally we have a backup person. We can tell when the call volume is high during the day as well as this, during the span of our school year. So this helped us eliminate some of the um, extra people at our front desk and because we were able to determine how many phone calls they were getting during the day or how many emails they were responding to and based on that information, we were able to hire or reorganize where people were. This also helped us to know how to staff our front desk. Sorry. And we also are able to determine how to improve things. Um, with our contracting agency, we needed, if we needed to let them know they needed to um, improve the information they send out, if we needed to address questions better on our website so that some of those general questions coming in could um, be eliminated and our end users might be able to find inf more information on their own. And we were also able to track the certificates that we send out. And we also use it to look inside student manager and CRM to decide whether or not we should adjust the coding for CRM and whether or not we need to be more clear in our uh, email content. So this is what it did. It improved and update as needed. Every now and again we meet um, the staff who use the CR use CRM. We meet and we go over the codes and revise the things that need to be revised, make revisions. What we don't, what we do is we make sure to keep the codes that even if they have uh, kind of expired, we don't really use them as much anymore. We still keep them, we just add on new code because if I look back later on from something from two years ago, I still want to be able to know that that is the reason that person called instead of, um, so for instance, R1 was requesting a certificate. If we got away from using certificates, I would still use keep R1 in our coding um, sheet so that two years from now, I would always know that person requested a certificate instead of replacing R1 with another need. So how this promotes efficiency, 
It improves information presented on our website. It notifies that there's a better need for communication in an area. For example, an email may need to go out to address something in mass, and program directors can see the value of having someone on the phones, etc. Basically, Customer Relationship Manager covers your butt. And how this helps our end users, their points of contact are in one place. So if they called and say that I've called several times, it's all located in one place. And you can say, you can kind of browse over it and see what the issue was if it, has, if it um, continues. There's no need to repeat everything every time that person calls because there's a contact history that um, highlights the main points. And in the end, it improves their experience as information becomes fine-tuned for the end user. So if you like it, try it. Um, what we did was when we were looking at uh, CRM, we contacted our tech, who is Lori, and she turned it on for us for a little while so we could try it out while we were comparing other um, software programs. And we loved it so much that we went ahead and bought it. So that's the conclusion of what I have and how Best Practices uses Customer Relationship Manager and how wonderful it is. I absolutely recommend it. We would recommend it too, Bessie. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's pretty awesome ourselves. So one of the questions that came in while you were presenting, you actually answered because it was the same question we had at the conference. Was there a lot of resistance to getting this system up and running? And do you get any resistance to keep it going? And does anybody kind of fall off the wagon, so to speak? Um, initially, we did get some resistance when we were first rolling it out because everyone was um, more comfortable with what they had been doing, but it wasn't consistent. Um, so if someone was out for a day, we weren't able to see their notes because they handwritten them for the phone calls. And so bringing everybody together to kind of come up with the codes showed them the need for the codes. And after a while, after a couple of weeks, uh, people didn't really need that coding sheet as much anymore because they remember the codes and they can see the, the need for it and the use for it. Once it's been implemented, um, we haven't had anybody that wanted to backtrack and go back to the old system at all. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Um, <clears throat> Have you had to make a lot of changes to the code, or were your initial codes pretty much what you ended up with? Uh, the initial codes are pretty much what we ended up with. We, we do, as our uh, program changes a little each year, we do add to the codes, but we don't really do a whole lot of modifying. We prefer to kind of leave them as they are just so um, we'll know in two years what it was we coded two years ago. And did you save any staff time? Absolutely. We absolutely did. It's, it, it's much more efficient. And so we were cutting down on trying to email somebody saying, well, you, this person said she spoke with you. And just cut it. We cut out a lot of time of having to backtrack and speak with other people because it was all in one place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm uh, Chuck again. Am I back unmuted, Lori? You are. We can hear you. Yes. I, a, a great great session, Bazzi. Um, question, do you use the student callback date uh, much on the name record, the, that callback feature to remind you to call a student back on a particular time? I do. Um, some of you my do. staff does not, but we, we, in general, yes. I was just going to say, that's one of the things for folks with the CRM element is that uh, the ability to use the callback date on the name and really also technically on the course and on the faculty member record, you've got the ability where, what kind of things do you do uh, on that, Bazzi, an example of the, the student callback uh, uh, well, most recent Most recently I used it, um, someone contacted us and she said she had trouble getting her certificate for whatever reason. Okay. And so I had a callback reminder set to call her to make sure that she received it via snail mail. And it's okay. just something for follow-up. That, that's mostly sure. how I use it. Sure. Yeah, and again, that would be one that, again, I would recommend. Now, that is actually part of the base system. It doesn't uh, involve the CRM module, which Bazzi so eloquently highlighted. Uh, but that's something that would work in conjunction with the CRM if there was a need to be reminded in a future date to do something on a student. 
uh, between the CRM notes and between your notes as you did in the contact side, uh, that would give you a great um, set of handles to, again, provide better service to your, to your students or make sales if you're doing sales call stuff. So, very good. Lori, how are we doing? Uh, most everybody else, uh, again, very well organized. There may not be much in the way of questions here. Uh, Deborah wants to know if you can put a note on student callback function, and yes, you can put a note in. You can do that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Short note. I mean, uh, and again, the idea with the callback function, Deborah, is that you could use uh, the comments field or the notes field that Bazzi showed uh, when you were showing the notes screen. Uh, that can be uh, viewed from the callback feature, so you can really get to the entire name record or the notes as part of the callback element. So. And um, people saying that they like your tips. Yes, I think good, that's a good great tips. idea. And Thank you. let's see, I've got somebody with a hand raised. Let's see if they've put anything in the question and answer box. And I do not see anything. So we may be all through the questions. Again, a great summer break here, learning about CRM. And again, from the master, uh, Bazzi. And again, <clears throat> I, I want to also highlight for those out there that this isn't an automatic piece. There is a lot of, you still, even though we are, there are tools that people use for callbacks or for CRM, Bazzi would be the first to tell you that no system does the work for you. You still have to enter accurate data. You have to use the system. And as Bazzi's shown you, you have to run the reports. So, um, again, just saying, yeah, we're going to add the module and it'll all it'll fix itself. You still have to work the system, use the system to make it work for you. And Bazzi, I think you've got an excellent example of of how that can work for you. So, okay. Lori, any other uh, comments in there? I'll let we're, you guys wrap up. No, I think we're going to come back to me so that we can talk about our next webinar, which uh -huh. is Wednesday, July sixteenth, Creative Coding. Chuck and I played with this title for a long time. <laughs> and ended up with this creative coding, taking your coding to the next level. And actually, Bazzi, you've given us some, again, that's a great segue to your, uh, to your CRM, because certainly you use coding in the CRM system. And uh, we'll be talking about that in lots of different areas within Student Manager. So. Absolutely. Very good. So. And I think we're all set. Bazzi, outstanding as always. I really appreciate it. And the, the response has been very positive. So yay, kudos. Yay. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Oh, so yeah. have a great summer, everybody. And Thanks. we'll see Bye. our AceWare group back in in a couple of weeks. So Very good. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.